let's explore the, the parallels between the tabernacle and Noah's Ark. And hopefully you find this striking and, and of interest. In Genesis 6, we see the beginning of about Noah's Ark. You, you read about how the Nephilim came to be, that the sons of man saw that the daughters of of man were fair and they had relations with them and created the Nephilim and all this stuff, okay? But we go to verse 8. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. These are the records of the generations in Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time. Noah walked with God. Noah became the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God, and earth and the earth was filled with violence. God looked on the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted it their way upon the earth. And I think we're headed, we're to getting really close to that point in this world uh, with the human sacrifice on demand. I won't bother calling it abortion. I will call it what it is. It's human sacrifice. It's making the kids pass through the fire basically uh, same difference and we're repeating the same mistakes as ancient Israel uh, however uh, back to this thing of it was corruption as Yeshua Jesus said it'll be as in the days of Noah well this is part of the days of Noah uh, but note what happened. But we read verse 13. Then, Noah, then God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come up before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. And behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. You shall make the ark with rooms and shall cover it inside and out with pitch. And here's one of my first parallels, is, or probably what the big one, is covered with pitch. What do we, where do we see wood covered with something? In the, ark, in the tabernacle, as well as the Ark of the Covenant and several other things. It's covered with gold. The ark is wood covered with gold. Just as the ark of, of Noah was wood covered with pitch. That idea of covering, to me, is a parallel. And I see the outer court as the sea. The inner court and the Holy of Holies is the ark of the... Uh, you know, seems rather interesting to me. And, and you read in uh, Exodus 26 about the sockets from verse 15 to of Exodus 26 to the end of the, to uh, verse 30. And these, these boards were covered with gold. It talks about the boards. Uh, verse 29 is what I'm trying to get at. You shall overlay the boards with gold. Make the rings of gold as holders for the bars. And you shall overlay the bars with gold. Everything in the tabernacle was overlaid with gold. You had the sockets of silver on the bottom. Everything else was gold. The boards were wrapped in gold, just as the, the ark was wrapped in pitch. Or, was 
covered in pitch on the inside and out. To me, there's a parallel there. Now we go back to Noah's Ark. Uh, you shall make it the length length of the Ark 300 cubits, its breadth 50, and its height 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the Ark and finish it to a cubit from the top and set the door of the ark in the side of it you shall make it with lower lower second and third decks behold and it basically tells them how to build the ark but let's go to 18 but I will establish my covenant with you and you shall enter the ark and you and your sons and your wives and your sons wives with you and every living thing of all flesh you shall bring of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you they shall be male and female for the birds after their kind basically it talks about and then verse 20 we go down to verse 22. thus Noah did according to all that God had commanded him and how do you then you look at that in uh, Exodus about, you know, they did all these things. Uh, you know, it was the tabernacle was built according to God's blueprint. And it had a, a door on the side. What happened with the doors? you have a veil two veils in the tabernacle which you read about from uh, Exodus 26 31 through uh, the end of the chapter you know and the pillars but what I want to parallel that to what I want to show is just as God sealed the door you can read in in the in in the flood account that God sealed the door and I want to go to I want to tie that to Hebrews chapter two, 9 or 10, uh, where it talks about Yeshua being the flesh. Uh, verse 19. Therefore, brethren, uh, verse 19 of Hebrews 10. Since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Yeshua, Jesus, a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil that is his flesh. The veil that is his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from the evil conscience and our body washed with pure water. So, the veil. Yeshua is the veil that protects us from the judgment, from the fire, from the consuming fire, with the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit is the oil that we are the lamps, but lamps alone don't don't shine. They have to have oil. You can light a wick on fire, and it's just going to consume the wick if you don't have oil. So as we get the oil that's preparation to enter the holy place but the ark uh, you see the tabernacle uh, I see parallels and like in your body you see you have ribs and they're not solid there's bone marrow inside with the outer outer shell 
in the ribs and it's kind of that same construction and then the heart being the Ark of the Covenant so to speak but we're building an ark so that we can endure when the consuming fire comes because that'll be the second judgment and you read Revelation you can talk see about the sea of glass mixed with fire uh, and and those different things and we're not saved by keeping the law by any means but we do build our ark it's, it's an act of faith our obedience is an act of faith not works you know we do according to what God commands us to do and if we read in Kings uh, when you when they built the temple well, actually, for Second Chronicles, just where people love to quote Second Chronicles seven fourteen. Well, we go before that. Second uh, Chronicles six, verse forty one. Now therefore, arise, O God, to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Let the priest, the Lord, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation and let your godly ones rejoice in what is good and then you read uh, about the the idea of the consuming fire in a sense the Shekinah glory in the beginning of chapter chapter 7 of 2nd Chronicles 7 now when Solomon had finished praying fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house the priests could not enter the into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled the, the Lord's house so that's why we have to be changed which you read about in 1 Corinthians 15 about we shall all not we shall not all die but we shall be changed but the whole thing here is about the ark being in the ark obedience repentance is how we build our ark turning from our wicked ways and obeying faith comes by hearing and obeying hearing and obeying comes by the word of god you read and then you and you read and you obey hear and obey and that's how you grow in faith I mean I've seat seat were a big thing for me I read a, about the commandment and I kept these are on my tallit but I have the other ones on my belt loops but it's a reminder of the commandments And it's it's one of those things that it was an act of faith to start wearing them, but the blessing came with it as I became obedient to that particular command, or obedient to not harming the edges of my beard. Leviticus 19:27 talks about that. But build that ark so that you are protected when the consuming fire comes. Remember, judgment of the wicked is deliverance for the righteous. Shalom, shalom.